It's Ann. Yes, I'm back again. What are you going to do? Just, what are you going to do? You can't get rid of me. Anyway, I'm still on my DIY kick. Especially since I found out about something that works like a charm. You have got to see this. Now, any of you who are familiar with the dilution formula or diluent that you can use to make eyeliner out of dry shadow or just wet it so you can do a wet application of the shadow. You know, if you're, if you're familiar with Inglot, you know they've got one and it's called Duraline. Well, I found the, heaven help me, DIY version, the formula, the recipe, whatever you want to call it, of that particular thing. Now, when I do my setting spray, it's basically 10 to 1. One tenth of the bottle is the glycerin. The rest of it is all the water and the toner. In this case, we're looking at 3 to 1 very much thicker. And in this little bottle, I put the glycerin to about here and then fill the rest with just toner. And I tried this stuff out last night. And I got me my, my little... This is a glass coaster. I picked it up at the thrift store for like 50 cents, you know, 50 cents. And this is what I use for my mixing palette. It's fine. Yes, it's got all those pretty ripples in it, sort of. Those ripples don't extend to the top of the particular piece of glass. Now, this is the, the, the Mini Nubian by Dubious Place. This is what I've currently got on my eyes. This is called a depotting tool or a lab spatula, whatever you want to go with. I'm, I'm using this because I can get just a little tiny bit of the shadow out of the pan with this because you don't want to put the door line in your pan or whatever you want to call it, the, the wetting solution. Now, I'm only taking out enough to basically be, you know, some heavy fallout, some heavy pan kick up. And I put it right there on the little palette. See, it's got a little bit of a dig in it now. Just a little one. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but there's a little bit of shadow on that surface. You'll have to fiddle with it a bit to figure out how much shadow you need for whatever shadow you're working with. One drop. And if you want to do a partial drop, if you squeeze the bulb so that it comes out a little bit and just tap it to the glass so it drops off, you're good to go. Got a flat brush, got a fairly good edge on it. I'm going to mix that shadow powder up with that little drop. And just kind of mix it around. And you end up with something that's kind of like a paste. Yes, it's hard to see on there. I didn't put that much to begin with. Now, I picked up, because I was mixing with the brush, so most of what I mixed up is on the brush. It's a little bit dry. Let me put another little tiny drop. So, of course, this worked out perfectly last night when I was trying it then. So, now it wants me to work for it. Go figure. 
Okay. Now, got it a little thinner because it got a little too dry. And what I did last night, once I got the stuff mixed up on my brush, I just did that. I used a darker color last night. I didn't think about that. This was the darkest color in this pan. You know, the darkest color in this palette. You don't waste your eyeshadow. You don't need to buy 60, 11 million different color eyeliners if you don't want them. And you don't have to pay 20 some bucks for a little bitty bottle from an expensive brand. It's rather interesting. All that, and this is pennies, mixing up glycerin and toner. Now, if you really want to get ham with this glycerin thing, you know, they, they, they keep touting the prep spray that, you know, they'll have sets where they've got the prep spray and then the setting spray. Okay. Find your favorite toner. Doesn't have to be expensive. Doesn't have to be scented. But if you like, happen to like rose water toner, get it. If you happen to like something that smells like cucumber, get it. And get yourself a little spray bottle. With the little spray bottle, now this one is still my water bottle because I haven't mixed up the prep the uh, prep spray yet, but it's basically just a spray-on moisturizer. Where I was putting this little bitty bit in this bottle for the setting spray, and then the rest of it's water and the toner, you would put basically this much of the glycerin into one of these little bottles. So about a quarter or so of the glycerin. And then fill the rest of it up with your toner. Because all of these, these prep spray is, is a spray on moisturizer. And if you thin the glycerin out with the toner that it's thin enough to spray, it's a heck of a moisturizer. So, you know, you can, I don't need these expensive sets of stuff. And it's like, okay, this has been sitting here a while. Still on there. dries down, sets, no problem. Now, I have had at least one person ask me about making these. Like I said, they're pretty much flat simple. If you have ever worked with crochet before, you could probably do this without watching this. I'm going to drop the camera down so you can see where I'm working. Okay, what I've got, there are some of the yarn setters, and this one came from Amazon. This was, there was a bag, a plastic bag of these little mini cotton yarns. 100% cotton. And it'll tell you on the side here what size knitting needles or crochet hook to use. Now, the crochet hook says three to four. The cro crochet hook that I use most often 
is this one. This is a, depending on where you find it and what your measurements are like where you're living, it's an F, as in Frank, which is a 3.75 millimeter. So I'm in between the sizes. Now this one's got a rubber handle on it that makes it easier on my hands. You can get them where they've already got these, or you can get them, you know, you can sometimes find the handles separate and put them together. Now this is one of the little balls that I've, stuck, that I've got the wrapper off and all that stuff. Now let me make sure I'm in frame here. Now don't pull it too tight, because if you pull it too tight, it makes it difficult to get the hook under. You go under the front one, grab and pull the back one through, which gives you your slip knot. Now we're going to do a basic chain, pull through, pull through, pull through, pull through. That gives you four stitches in a basic chain. You go back to the very first stitch and pass the top of the hook through, pick up thread, and then take that thread that you picked up and go all the way through that one stitch you had. So you make a loop. Now you go into the center of that ring, pick up your yarn, pull it through. Now you've got two loops on your hook. Pick up your yarn, pull it through. Now, depending on where you are from, if you are from the U.S., they will tell you that that is a single stitch. It is not known as a single stitch if you're from the U.K. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. The only reason I know about the U.K. is because I sometimes get crochet and knitting patterns from the U.K. Now, you're going to keep doing those stitches going through the center of the ring until you get this filled up fairly tightly. It's going to be about 10 to 15 stitches, depending. There's the second one. Now, you've got that trailing tail from where you made your slip knot. Just hold it next to your stitches and it'll get wrapped in. Don't worry about it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Now, you can actually push the stitches around the ring a little bit if they're very close together so that you can get all of your stitches in for your ring. Then you go into this first one that you created on the ring, go through the top, it's the little horseshoe thing here. Go right under both of those pieces, pick up your thread, come back through under that first little horseshoe, take the thread through so you've closed that particular ring, chain one, chain two, turn your work. Now, 
you see there's the stitch that's right off the hook and then there's the next stitch you don't want to work in the stitch that's right off the hook right off the hook next stitch you go into that next stitch pull up your loop so you've got two pull through both same thing right under that little horseshoe pull it up okay now you've done two stitches now you're going to do one right back into the same stitch two that's going to give you expansion because if you don't give yourself expansion you're just going to keep going around in a circle and it's going to stay the same size and it's just going to turn into a tube now if you're making gloves that's just fine we're not making gloves one two one second stitch in the same one two one two Second stitch in the same one, two, one. Okay, now you're back where you started with that first chain, which counts as one stitch. You go into the top of the chain, pull your thread up, pull it all the way through one two turn the work so that you're going back the other way every time you go do a forward stitch you end up with the horseshoe with the tight part going this way if you're turning correctly you'll be facing the opposite when you go to do your next stitch one Two. Now see, you've got your horseshoes running this way. I don't know why, it just makes it lay better. And basically, you're going to just repeat this pattern all the way around, repeatedly, until you're happy with the size. One. Two, one, two in the same stitch. Now, you might run into other people who look at you and go, I'm doing it wrong. That's possible. Some people have been taught by people who have been doing this for clip and ever. They have their own way of doing crochet. It's like, I already know I don't hold the needle to suit a lot of people. I don't hold the hooks right. I hold them the way my hands work. That's it. Now, a lot of people you'll see that work them this way. And the way they feel about it is they're working through the back of the piece. I can't do it. You know, they'll hold it like they're holding a pencil. And it's like, I, I can't do it. My hands don't work that way. I had the same problem with the American style of holding the needles for knitting. And if you run into somebody who 
is from Europe. They may be using what's called the continental style, which for some reason, for some people, works just beautifully. Not for me. It just, no, it's not my thing. It doesn't work for me. So I do what works for me. If you go and watch some of the other DIY stuff, they will show you perhaps different techniques, different holding styles, different casting on. The thing is, this is just a basic one stitch kind of thing. And you just keep going around until you either run out of yarn or you're happy with the size of it. Doesn't matter. If this floats your boat, party on. If not so much, now if you've got now if you know somebody who really likes handcrafted stuff and would think this is neat, get some other yarn and make them some coasters. I've got some coasters that I've made that have lasted for bloody years. But I did exactly the same way. I just kept going round in circles. Over and over. Around the circle. All I'm suggesting is if you really want to try it, give it a try. A little ball of cotton yarn from the local yarn shop or craft store or whatever is not that expensive. A plastic hook of whatever size is recommended on your little guide, usually you can get a plastic hook, a single, for a buck or so. If you want a metal hook, have that. Now, if I was doing this by knitting, it would not be round. It would be square. Because that's the way I roll. I do what's called a corner to corner with my knitting. And basically it starts off with one stitch, or in some cases three stitches, just so you've got something to work with. And I just keep adding this is one corner, and I just keep adding stitches until I get out to the size that I want. And then I start decreasing stitches exactly the same rate that I was putting them on, and then you end up with a square. This one's going to be a blanket, so it's not going to be done anytime soon. I have a huge cone of yarn that I'm working on for that. I'll show it to you even when I get it done. But see, it just grows on its own. It's, it's kind of fractal. It just keeps going. It's the same pattern over and over. One, two, and then one, two. If one side of the yarn gets a little loose, just give it a little tug, it'll even out. One, two, one, two. 
See, so if you get one like that, just pull it back down. One. You know, if one side gets real floppy, like you've got it pulled up like this, and you go to pick up the other one and it's floppy, just give it a tug. It'll even back out. One, two, one, two. Around and around and around and around. And then you have a face scrubby. Now I get the softest cotton I can find when I'm doing these. And when I bought this cotton, I got this on Amazon. I know, for some of us, Amazon is a cuss word. But for some of the rest of us, we're kind of stuck with it because we live out in the boonies. And you got to have somebody who will deliver. There were 20, count them, 20 mixed color of these little balls in the bag and I think I paid 10 bucks for 20 little balls each one of these little balls will make depending on how big you make them three or four of the face scrubbies give it a try if you don't like it Find out who in your family does the craft and either bribe them to make them for you or just give them the stuff and say, here. And then go out and buy whatever else you want to use. But yeah, I'll try and look at being reasonably sustainable. Something that you can wash and reuse until you wear it out. Anyway, this has been kind of fun. We'll see what happens the next time. Bye.